So I did a poll for which video to do next, and uh, Datastar came out of nowhere to win. Um, Datastar is a 14 kilobyte hypermedia framework, uh, which is just about to release its 1.0. Um, so it does a bunch. It does. It claims to sort of do you know the front end of something like Alpine, but also like HTMX and kind of AJAX, but then also uh, server sent events and real time data from your server. So that's all too much to cover for one video. Uh, so we're gonna split this up and let's talk about what it can do for front-end interactivity. I've set up a page. This is a, a static HTML page uh, made from Tailwind UI parts. Now, uh, there's all these different sections and I've kind of labeled what each section is gonna do. So we've got tabs over here. Um, we have our counter. We have our uh, global toggle over here. And we have the dropdown. Um, Okay, so none of these work right now. This is 100% static HTML, no JavaScript whatsoever. Now I'm gonna make each of these sections work using Datastar. Okay, so first thing we're gonna do is we add the Datastar CDN to the top of the page. Um, and that's, you know, that's all we need to do to import Datastar. Like I said, it's, it's tiny. You can import this even if you've imported, you know, 10 other things here. This is not gonna, this is no big deal. Okay. So let's do first, you know, the hello world of front end interactivity, um, the counter. So what we do is we set a signal for the counter and you can just think of a signal as a variable. You know, that's all it can do a lot, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit. Then we can use that signal to display the value using data text. So data text, you know, data star comes with all these different data dash attributes and data text just says put into the text of this div or this element um, the value of the variable here so okay that's all we've done we've set up the signal we can go to the we can set the data text now we can just refresh and we can see that it's working we have a number in there for the counter uh, that is driven by the interact driven by the signal okay now let's increment and decrement it by setting the signal value on click, all right? So we have these two buttons and we want to just basically set them on click. Okay, uh, so now we've set these two, we can just click there and you can see that the buttons now affect the number. Okay, so uh, how easy was that, you know, <laughs> to get started with? So this is, you know, this is why I'm, I'm sort of showing this. Uh, this is, I think, one of the simplest ways to handle this, um, just kind of very straightforward. Okay. So let's do the drop down next. Um, drop downs are basically just you know hiding and showing stuff as needed. So let's see if we can make this do this pretty easily. So the first thing we're going to do is set our data signals equals to button hover, and that's going to make it so that we have a true false for whether or not we're hovering over the button. And we want to show the part of the drop down that should be shown, the menu. Okay. So we add this. We add the data show to the menu. We have the mouse over on the actual button and the data show on the menu. So let's try that. We refresh and now it opens nicely, uh, but it never closes, right? Um, okay, so how do we close it? We have to set the mouse leave on the button. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set the button hover to false on mouse leave, okay? So this data on lets you do any event right there. So we have mouse over, mouse leave, and now we can see that menu is actually impossible to click. It just kind of disappears. <laughs> so we need to fix that. So let's add a second signal. So right now we have, we have the button hover. Um, that's true or false. Now we're gonna do the menu hover as true or false, right? So are you hovering over the menu? So we set the same data on the mouse events. We set the mouse over and the mouse leave on the menu. Um, but now we need to, we want our logic to say, show this menu if either one of them is true. Uh, that way it only closes when we leave both. Okay, so let's refresh and test that. Um, okay, perfect. So you can see now you can just have a working uh, drop down here. Now again, that was really easy, right? Um, and it's very easy to tell what the code is doing right there. You know, it's just, it's, it's kind of this declarative. You can just like locality of behavior. Um, when you're looking back at this and trying to figure out how, oh, what's going on here. And you know, these are simple examples, but you're going to have more complex examples. And it's going to be nice to be able to just look at your HTML code and see what is happening. At least that's how I feel. 
Um, okay, so I'm going to keep this video short, actually, um, because, uh, you know, I think I'm going to what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this link up so that you can see. Uh, so we have these working tabs, which is nice. See, you can change the change the tab here. Uh, those use signals the same way. Um, and we have this global toggle, right? So signals are global. They're for your whole page. They're for your whole DOM. Um, so, you know, it's not just scoped to a certain part of your DOM. Um, so you can uh, you can use them in different places uh, and you can update them. Now, the real powerful, this is, is not even the core of Datastar. This is just something you get for free with Datastar. Um, it's this really nice, simple front-end reactivity. It's actually more powerful than it seems here because these signals can be shared and updated by your backend server. And in fact, that's, you know, that's how Datastar works. It's using these things sent from your backend. So I will show in a future video how you can do some very cool stuff with the server sent events and the backend. Um, but let me know what you think about these, you know, these signal examples. Check out that page. See if you can figure out how the global toggle and the tabs are going to work before you look at the code. And you can just right click and look in the code to see what's happening. So no mystery. But I'll put a link to the code too, to the actual, uh, you know, uh, GitHub file. Um, plus, I'm answering questions in the comments. So I don't know if you have any questions. Uh, I'll take a look.